जी के बंदर तीन खाते नहीं किसी से छीन गांधी जी के बंदर तीन खाते नहीं किसी से छीन आंख बंद कर कहता एक कभी बुराई को मत देख आंख बंद कर कहता एक कभी बुराई को मत देख नंबर दो मुंह पर रखा कहता करो न गंदी बात नंबर दो मुंह पर रखा कहता करो न गंदी बात नंबर तीन बंद कर कान कहे झूठ पर मत दो ध्यान नंबर तीन बंद कर कान कहे झूठ पर मत दो ध्यान गांधी जी के बंदर तीन खाते नहीं किसी से छीन गांधी जी के बंदर तीन खाते नहीं किसी से छीन आंख बंद कर कहता एक कभी बुराई को मत देख आंख बंद कर कहता एक कभी बुराई को मत देख नंबर दो मुंह पर रखा कहता करो न गंदी बात नंबर दो मुंह पर रखा कहता करो न गंदी बात नंबर तीन बंद कर कान कहे झूठ पर मत दो ध्यान नंबर तीन बंद कर कान कहे झूठ पर मत दो ध्यान On the 9th of September 1947, Gandhi moved into the Delhi home of his friend Birla, a rich captain of industry who had always supported the Congress party. And on the 10th of January 1948, he began another hunger strike as a means of stopping the massacre of Muslims in India. Hindu refugees couldn't understand Gandhi's compassion for the Muslims who were massacring their kinfolk. But he went further with his hunger strike conditions, demanding that India should actually give a share of India's treasury to Pakistan. Gandhi began his hunger strike to force the Indian government to give the newly created Pakistan a part of the British Indian treasury. Uh, uh, which had been handed over to India. Gandhiji that stood in favor of Pakistan and said that I shall go on hunger strike, I shall die and the 55 crores should be given. Then only I shall release my fast. At that moment some Youths like me decided you will not die of hunger strike, you will die of bullets now. This was completely unacceptable to the Hindu nationalist, that Gandhi chose to starve so that India would respect the financial clauses of the partition agreement and to transfer 550 million rupees to Pakistan, which had already started bombarding Kashmir. So on the 20th of January, there was an attempt. Uh, as far as I remember, seven of the accused were present at the prayer meeting. They were Nathuram Gorse, Narayan Apte, Vishnu Karkare, Madanlal Pahwa, and Gopal Gorse, that is myself. Gandhi was the target of a murder attempt on June the 20th. But Gopal Godse, the shooter, wasn't able to reach the window from which he planned to fire. He hadn't thought to bring a ladder. So I tried from the window. I could not reach my hand also. It was so high, even inside. So that was for half a minute or so. So I just came out. So Lal asked to ignite a gun cotton slab near the boundary wall. He did it. Then 
he was caught by the police. Further actions did not take place. So we all ran away from the place. The plotters fled to Puna in order to plan a second attack. Their colleague, who'd thrown the homemade bomb, had been arrested. Under torture, he'd named his accomplices. In India today, the question is still asked, how come the police knew the names of the plotters, yet for 10 days did not try to arrest them? Mahatma Gandhi used to sit in the manor, as you can see in this picture. This was taken on 29th January, on the eve of his passing away. He would address, people would be sitting here, some would be very angry with him, that they would think, I mean, I don't know, there was a thinking amongst them that Bapu did not do enough to prevent the partition. On the 30th of January, Natram himself uh, arranged for a, a pistol, automatic pistol, and went to the prayer ground, evening at 5 o'clock, or five, maybe five minutes late. The column indicates the exact spot where Gandhi fell, was felled by the assassin's bullet. The assassin lay in waiting for the Mahatma in this corner. As the Mahatma reached this spot to go there, he stepped forward. He took three steps, bowed before Mahatma Gandhi and he shot him point blank three bullets. And if you see the photograph of Mahatma Gandhi with the bullet, it's almost, you know, it looks like a garland. It's almost in a semicircle. The assassin garlanded Mahatma Gandhi with bullets. And I think at that one moment, Mahatma Gandhi rose from the ashes from the earth and he became larger than life. would say on the radio, the light of our lives has been extinguished. There is nothing left but darkness. Nehru decided to outlaw the movements that, in his view, were responsible for Gandhi's assassination. Hindu Mahasabha and the RSS. 20,000 militants of the RSS were put behind bars. It became a manhunt, a hunt for Brahmins of the Mahastra. They let the crowds of Gandhi supporters loose against the Brahmins of Mahastra, which was the caste of the killer Godsi belonged to which was associated with the Hindu Mahasabha and the RSS. The trial of Gandhi's assassins was held at the Red Fort, a highly symbolic choice. It was there that Nehru made his first speech to the people of independent India. Today, it's from the Red Fort that the Prime Minister addresses the crowds during national festivals. India was a democracy, and therefore the accused Gandhi assassins had the right to trial. The trial at the Red Fort gave Naturam Godse a wonderful platform. He undertook his own defense. Even though he had lawyers, it was he who pleaded his case and explained that his belief in Hinduism and the Bhagavad Gita justified the violence, his faith in the Hindu nation that Gandhi had betrayed. 
They had to rid the nation of this man because he'd shown constant weakness in the face of Pakistan. Faiblesse permanente vis-à-vis du Pakistan. Donc c'est une opération de salubrité. It was an operation of extreme public service. Politique, ce n'est pas une action d'un désir. The real politic, not the wild ideas of someone deranged that had turned into action. It was considered very poor.